Welcome back to the second part for lesson 3.3, the equation of a line. <clears throat> so far, we have learned um, how to recognize the slope and the y-intercept when our equation is in this format where y is isolated and all terms are on the other side and simplified. We've learned how to find an equation um, and slopes of parallel and perpendicular lines. <clears throat> uh, we've been able to find an equation when we've been given the slope and the y-intercept. We've learned how to find an equation when we've been given two points. So if you've been given two points, you find the slope and then solve for the y-intercept and you've got your equation. So let's do practice with one more of these. So we've been given these two points and we need to find the equation of the line. <clears throat> so we first thing we need to do is find the slope. So I'm going to take one tenth and subtract a negative one half all over the change in y, so one half subtracting a negative one half. <clears throat> so in the denominator, I've got one half plus one half, so that becomes one. And then <clears throat> if I get a common denominator here of 10, this is a negative five tenths. So we have one tenth plus five tenths is six tenths over one. So it's just six tenths. <clears throat> okay. Now I need to find my y intercept. So you can either find your y intercept by using the y equals mx plus b and solving for b or using your point slope form up here. It's your choice. So I'm going to use y equals mx plus b. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the point one half and one tenth. So one tenth is y and m is six tenths times x, which is one half plus b. So this is one tenth equals two goes into six three times. So this is three tenths plus B. <clears throat> and I'm going to solve for B. So I'm going to subtract three tenths from both sides. So B or my Y intercept is one minus three is a negative two tenths, or you could write that as a negative one fifth. So my equation of the line is six tenths is my slope, remember up here, X minus one fifth. In decimal form, that's y equals 0.6x minus 0.2. <clears throat> now, I'm going to teach you how to find um, an equation of a line in Desmos when you've been given two points. And this is important to be able to do because you want to be able to check your work. So first thing you can do is create a table and putting in your two points. So a negative one half, oops, one half, and then um, a negative one half. And then the other point was one half and one tenth, okay. Now you can see that they we plot to the points over here on the graph. I'm gonna just zoom fit. So there's my two points right here. 
So in your next line, you are going to use y1 and x1. If your data is in x2 and y2, you would reference those, but I'm going to use y1 and x1. So I'm going to say y1, and I'm going to use the tilde symbol. <clears throat> that symbol is um, up. If you use your shift key and the key next to your one, that will give your tilde. That's also down here on your um, I thought it was in your menu, but I guess it's not. So you have to use your tilde symbol. But then if you do M for slope and you say reference X1, and then you add B for your Y intercept, it will find the line for you between those two points. And you know it's perfect because R equals one. We're gonna build on that later. But cool, look at it gives me the slope 0.6, which we came up with and the y-intercept of a negative 0.2. So all you have to do is put your two points in and use y1 tilde mx1 plus b. I'm going to put this little um, Desmos link in the Desmos link in our Canvas course for you. So let's go to another problem here. <clears throat> um, wanted to share with you some facts from geometry that are going to be important for linear equations. So if we have a line <clears throat> that goes directly through the, the origin, our y-intercept is zero and our x-intercept is zero, and it looks just like this, y equals mx, because there's no y-intercept other than zero. If we have a vertical line, the slope is undefined and it's just at the at the equation x equal to a it's a vertical line <clears throat> if we have a line that is a horizontal line slope is equal to zero there is a slope but it's equal to zero and it's at the line y equals b whatever that y intercept is so we're going to use those um, to help us with some of the next few problems so example five says, find the equation of the line parallel to this line that contains this point. So the first thing is, is we need to find the slope. And to find the slope, we need to solve for y so that we are in y equals mx plus b format. So I'm going to subtract 2x. And I'm just solving for b by dividing by negative 4 from every term. So a negative 2 over negative 4 <clears throat> reduces to a positive 1 half x. And then we have positive 5 over negative 4 is a negative 5 fourths. So because it's parallel, we're going to have the same, so, same slope. And that's going to be 1 half. And we want to go through the point zero three. Well, the cool thing is, is zero three is the y intercept because that's when x is zero. So I just happened to give you that. So my new line is y equals this slope one half x plus three. Let's try another one. So it says find the equation of the line perpendicular to the graph of this line and contains this point. So perpendicular means that slope one multiplied by slope two equals a negative one. So we need to find slope one and find slope two to multiply to make a negative one. So again, we need to solve for y <clears throat> to get our slope. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Just try to solve for y. And then I'm going to circle y. So dividing by a negative 5, by all terms are going to divide by a negative 5. 
So we'll have y equals a negative 3 fifths x minus 2 fifths. And all we really need from this is this coefficient on x. That's our slope. So the m1 slope is a negative 3 fifths. And that means that M2 is a positive because M1 is a negative and the reciprocal, so 5 thirds. <clears throat> then um, we can prove it because we're mathematicians. So a negative 3 fifths times 5 thirds equals a negative 15 over 15 is one. So we know that they're reciprocals. So my new line, um, so my new line has the slope of five thirds and goes through the point two negative six. And so we need to find the y-intercept. <clears throat> So this time I'm going to choose to use the point slope form. And that says y minus the new y of negative 6 equals the slope 5 thirds times x minus the new x. Okay. I'm going to remind you that here, it's y minus the point coordinate y equals m times x minus the coordinate of x. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify y plus 6, I have to distribute, so 5 thirds x minus 10 thirds. And then to solve for y, <clears throat> um, just actually just we're trying to get this in to get our solve for b here. We're going to subtract 6. The y equals 5 thirds x. And I have a negative 10 thirds minus 6. So I'm going to actually show you, I'm going to do this in Desmos because um, that's a negative 10 thirds, and I am subtracting 6. So that's a negative 9.33. Instead of having a repeater, I'm going to put it in a fraction form. So that is a negative 28 thirds is my y-intercept. <clears throat> so here is my new equation. my new line. That is exciting. Okay, <clears throat> let's try another one. Example seven says, write the equation of the lines parallel to the graph of y equals a negative four x plus two that has an, an x-intercept of five. So parallel is same slope, and it's in the form that we need. So there's my slope. So the slope is a negative four, and we want to go through this point. Uh, we already know the y-intercept is five, zero, five. So we can just say y equals a negative four x plus five. That one was much easier. Okay, <clears throat> let's look at some real life problems here. So example eight says, the table below gives the maximum heart rate for adults um, at 30, 40, 50, and 60 years old. So here we have age is listed as A, and then maximum heart rate in the beats per minute is M. And so 190, 180, 170, 160. So when we work out, they're saying the maximum heart rate, so the maximum that your heart should be beating 
when you are 50 years old is 170 beats per minute when you work out. So A says use any two points, any two of the ordered pairs up here from the table to derive the equation M equals 220 minus A, which gives the maximum heart rate M for an adult whose age is A. Okay, so we wanna show that this is the equation. So let's use, um, I'm gonna use these two points to find my slope. So I'm gonna just start with 190 and subtract 180, and that means I have to subtract 30 minus 40. So I get 10 over a negative 10 or a negative one. Okay, so my slope is a negative one. Okay. <clears throat> um, so I'm just gonna write slope is a negative one because we're using M and A, so A is like my X and M is like my Y. So that would make sense. I have a negative one and that is a negative one on A. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this point to find my equation. So we've got, um, we're using M and A. <clears throat> <clears throat> so I'm just gonna write M and X here. So Y and X. So I'm gonna do Y minus, 190 equals my slope, which is negative one times X minus 30. So Y minus 190, I'm gonna distribute on my negative one. So it's a negative X plus 30 and adding 190 to both sides, we get Y equals a negative X plus 220. <clears throat> and Y is really M and X is really A, and I'm just gonna rewrite it so it matches. So it's 220 minus A. We did it. Part B says, use the equation from part A <clears throat> to find the maximum heart rate for a 25 year old adult. So the age is the letter A. So I'm gonna put A in, so the maximum heart rate is 220 minus 25. And that comes out to be 195. So the maximum heart rate would be 195 beats per minute. That's all they should have when they're working out. Okay, <clears throat> last question. Example nine says, solar energy. The graph shows the annual number of solar thermal collector shipments in the US. Find an equation for the line segment that connects the points eight and 13,750 and then nine and 15,000. Write your answer in slope intercept form. Now remember, this is really 13,750, no commas in Desmos, and this is 15,000 as a height, a number of shipments. So these are the years. Um, and then these are the shipments. So they want us to find a slope, find an equation. So first we have to find a slope just between these two years. So I'm going to do 15,000 minus 13, 7, 15, over 9, minus 8. So that's over 1. And then 15,000 minus 13, 7, 50 is 12, 50. So every year, shipments increase by 1,250. Okay. Now this is year eight and nine. So this is just between year eight and nine. This is what we're finding this line right here. Okay. Now to find my line, I'm going to do the point slope. So y minus, um, I'm going to do this point eight and 13, seven, 13, 750. So minus 
fifteen seven fifty equals my slope one twelve five zero oh, times x minus eight. So I have to distribute so one thousand two hundred fifty x minus. 1,250 times 8 is 10,000. And now to solve for y, because we want y alone, we'll have y equals 1,250x plus 3,750. <clears throat> And that is only between these two points here. Now it says, do you think that if you chose other points, you would get the same equation? Explain why or why not. Give an example to prove your answer. So this is definitely something to think about. Um, so I'm going to show you in Desmos putting these two points in because I mentioned earlier, I showed you how to do that. And you can come up with the equation of the line. So I'm going to go back to my um, let me say this. Okay, so we can put in any two points. So I'm going to put in the two points that you were given, eight and thirteen seven fifty, and then the up the other point was nine and 15,000. Okay, so here's the equation. I'm going to zoom in on our points. There's the two points. Now, here's the equation. It's the slope that we came up with on the B. But now I'm going to go up here and say, well, what if we added, what if we did the point, um, I'm going to go back and share. Okay, okay. What if we did this point to this point? That line, that line would be different than this slope of this line here. So let's do those points four, and it looks like about 7,500. And the last point at 10, and it looks like it's just under 20,000. So we'll say, 19,500. So let's change that. So that's going to be 4 and 7,500. So it looks like our our slope is 2,000, so it's higher, and our y-intercept is lower. And so this is, I wanted to show you that because um, this one would be have a slope of 2,000 and a y-intercept of a negative 500. And so when we look at data, we really shouldn't just look at what is the line between two particular points. We want to see the line that best fits. It's called the line of best fit. And you type that into your Desmos like this, Y1, whatever Y, um, whatever Y column you are using, a tilde symbol, M for your slope, whatever X1 column, X2 or whatever column you're using for X, plus B, and it will give you the line of best fit, okay? So we could go in and put data for all of these if we could estimate where all these were. And we're gonna, we're gonna do a little bit more with this later on down the road, but I want to let you know that there is a line that would best fit all of this data, not just between two points. So catch me back for some more lessons in chapter three.